Prophecy of Vanessa Everett. We'd like to remind everyone that DJICC is standing on Psalm 91. We recommend that everyone follow the governmental orders to practice. Wash your hands. Only venture out when absolutely necessary. We are concerned about our elderly members, and although worship services have moved to a digital platform, we are determined to get the gospel to them via Zoom, Facebook, and email announcements. Although the church doors are closed temporarily, we invite you to support the ministry with your tithes and offering via text to give at 551-258-8547 or online at djicc.org. Click give. God bless and keep you safe and healthy. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Who's on the Lord's side? God bless you, God bless you, God bless you. And welcome to Deliverance Jesus is Coming Church. Our physical location, 815 Springfield Avenue, Irvington, New Jersey. But today we meet you here, Zoom, and those of you in Facebook land, we welcome you on today. God bless you, God bless you. So now let's just go into our scripture for this morning. And our scripture is coming from Matthew, the second chapter, verses seven to 11. And it reads, then Herod, when he had heard privately, called the wise men, inquired of them diligently what time the star appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, go and search diligently for the young child. And when you have found him, bring me word again that I may come and worship him also. When they had heard the king, they departed and lo, the star which they had saw in the east went before them till it came and stood over where the young child was. And when they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceedingly great joy. And when they came into the house, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and fell down and worshiped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. May God add a blessing to the reading of his word. Now let's go into prayer. Father, we thank you for this day that you have made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Father, we thank you for this special occasion, Father God, a day of remembrance, God, how this day is special unto the Deliverance Jesus is Coming family. And Father, we pray that as the service would go forth, Father God, we pray, Father God, that you would just rain down upon the people of God, those that are near and those that are far, the ones that are listening at this time and those that will listen at a later time. God, we ask that you would bless, anoint, Father God, every word that would come forth, God. We pray, Father God, that you would bless the sick, God, during this time, God. Bless the well, bless this land, Father God. Lord, we just say thank you, God, for who you are, because it's nobody but you, Father God, that has kept us, and we thank you for that, God. Lord, we just love you. We honor you, God. We bless your holy name for who you are, God. You are our God. 
the magnificent one, the holy one, the righteous one. And our hope is in you, God. And for this, we give you praise, glory, and honor. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. So now at this time, I'm gonna turn the service over. You'll be hearing from our announcements at this time. God bless you. Thank you for worshiping with us. Join Jesus is Coming every Tuesday at 7.30 p.m. for worship service on Zoom. ID number 973-375-8500. Monday through Friday, there's Noonday Prayer. And Wednesdays from 7.30 p.m. at 717-275-8941. Use passcode 8939353. Need a mask? We've got you covered. Protect yourself and support the ministry at the same time. Purchase your Jesus is Coming face mask for $12 plus shipping and handling from our website. Bulk orders are welcome. For more information, special events, and additional ways to partner with us in ministry, please visit djicc.org and like djicc.org on Facebook. As you remain committed to being in good health by getting that physical checkup with your physician, we are excited to invite you to men's Bible study that will continue on the third Thursday of the month, December 17, 2020. It is an opportunity to study the Word of God specifically for men. So log in to Zoom and let's study together. Men, keep in mind, we will have our men's prayer on this coming Saturday at 10 a.m. The conference call, 480-297-0773, passcode 905401. We're going to study together and we're going to pray together too. Join us this Saturday at 10 a.m. One more date. It's Your Turn 2020, presented by the Deliverance Jesus is Coming Church Evangelism Outreach. The online mini-conference concludes Friday, December 18th with the Reverend Micah McCreary. Visit our website at www.djicc.org for more information about the dynamic speaker and look for Facebook Live information. Don't miss your turn because it's your turn. Deliverance Jesus is Coming continues to present the youth and young adult worship experience every fourth Sunday. And on Sunday, December 27th, the youth and young adult invite you to the youth and young adult worship experience for Sunday morning worship. Don't miss it, for our speaker for that day will be none other than our overseer, Vanessa Everett. Listen. There's healing for your sorrow. There's healing for your pain. There's healing for your spirit. There's shelter from the rain. There is the healing room on Zoom. Now, if you miss the other theme nights, there's another opportunity for you on December 28th at 7 p.m. Begin or continue your healing process with Dr. Cheryl, 
Coach Novella, and Therapist Jackie. Visit our website for more information on the Zoom ID and passcode. Let the healing begin. We welcome all our visitors and invite you to remain connected with us. Please email us at guest at djicc.org or click on the link in the chat and complete the online form. Let us know that you came to visit with us. We certainly appreciate you worshiping with us. For more information, visit our website, www.djicc.org. And now we return you to the hands of the Master of Ceremony, Sister Michelle Glover. God bless you. God bless you. And please govern yourselves accordingly. And as it was said, just visit djicc.org for further announcements. It gives me great privilege and honor at this time to present to you our overseer. I still call her overseer, Pastor Vanessa Everett. God, we thank you for her. We thank you that you continue to touch her and enlighten her during this time. We just thank God for our overseer. So let's bring her forth. God bless you, overseer. God bless you, Sister Michelle. And thank you so much for that wonderful introduction. God bless you, people of God out there everywhere. We're grateful for this day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. We're grateful for the fact that God is keeping us just another day that the Lord has kept us. He's kept us from all evil and he keeps our minds stayed on him. I know you say, well, I don't walk around thinking about him, but when you do, when you remember the goodness of the Lord, bring it to a point where you take your time to give him a praise, no matter where you are. You don't have to do it loud. Nobody around you has to know, but when God knows that you acknowledge the blessings of life, we are glad. We have something to be glad about. I was just sitting here and I was thinking, you know, God has been good to us this year through all that we have been experienced and challenged with, the fact that we can say he's walked with us every single day and that we can testify that he's been there as a keeper because he loves us so much. So we're grateful for this day and I thank God, not just for the family of God, Deliverance Jesus is coming membership, but for each of you that has stopped by to visit us on this morning, for our worship service. Listen, we have something very special for you for today. But in addition to that, we just wanna take a moment to add a few things to our announcements. We wanna remind you, those that haven't, and tell those of you who haven't heard that on Saturday, December 19th, from one to 3 p.m., our outreach ministry is going to be feeding and gift giving. And so we want you to join us, bring someone, if you're a member of the church and you know someone that has a need or you have a need yourself, come by and pick up a meal, come by and pick up a gift and know that God loves you. And we just want to be the instrument, divide up. We want to be that place that, or in that place that we can show you from love, encourage your heart, even during this time of COVID and coronavirus, Listen, things are heightening and, and of course they're talking about the levels are still going up. People are still going to the hospital. People are still losing their life. But each day that God has given you to, to be able to open your eyes and get out of your bed, oh, you might get out with her aches and a few pains, get out and give them a praise anyhow. And God will bless you throughout the day. And we want to encourage you as much as we possibly can we will respect social distancing and everything that is required of us to be in compliance. And, you know, compliance sounds a little stiff and all, but we're going to do what we can to keep you safe while we show the love of God. 
let's reach out to our communities, to our family, to our friends, and invite them to come by. That's Saturday, December 19th, from 1 to 3 p.m. at 815 Springfield Avenue in Irvington. Deliverance Jesus is coming, church. We want to do what God has called us to do. Reach the lost, reach souls, encourage hearts, and make you happy during this time, during this holiday season. We also want to remind you that on Christmas morning at 9 a.m., we will be having our worship service. We invite you to join us before you open your presents. I know that's difficult with the kids when they get up. That's the first thing they want to do. But before you open presents on Christmas Day, let's take time out to recognize the greatest gift giver, our Lord, who gave his son, Jesus Christ. Let's come together for worship and praise and thank God for what he's done for us, giving us life. And then we want to remind you also that on watch night, which is December 30th, 31st, I'm sorry, we will gather together on Zoom, on Zoom, and we will have our worship service. We're going to begin at 1045, and we want the saints to come in early, and we want to be able to join together in a collective prayer. Prayer is going to be going on from 1045 to 11 o'clock. And then we will begin our service at 11. I know when we talk about prayer, the numbers are usually few, but be blessed to know that God has brought you through this year and how good he's been to you. And join us for the prayer time. And after prayer, we will go right into our service, planning a wonderful service for you on watch night. And let us bring in the new year rejoicing. Many people say, I can't wait till 2021. Well, we don't know what 2021 holds. So let's go in with a mind of prayer, go in with a mind to be victorious, go in with encouragement in our hearts, go in with the faith of God that he's going to keep us and take us through whatever, whatever tomorrow holds, if he allows us to see it. Because we are learning more than ever to number, uh, teach us to number our days and to acknowledge what's going on in this world. Tomorrow is not promised to us, saints. So we need to be ready every step of the way. Listen. I was praying about how we would approach today's service. Today is December the 13th, a very special day in many of our lives. It is the day that we will be celebrating our Bishop James, the late Bishop James H. Everett. And so we have prepared a very, very special presentation to pay tribute to our Bishop, our leader on this day. And I want you to sit through, don't turn off your screens, don't, don't leave us, stay with us and be blessed as we go through this presentation. It's going to be different. This would have been his 75th, yes, his 75th uh, birthday. He's celebrating it with the Lord. Nothing I can do about that part, but we can sure take time to say, Lord, we thank you for the man of God that you gave us and how you used him to bless our lives. Many of you today might not have known the Lord had it not been for God using him to minister to you. Then there are some of you, you knew the Lord, but you were experiencing some things in your life that you needed encouragement through. Thank God for Bishop Everett. And so now I would like to take this time to let you review with us, see with us, hear with us those things that God has blessed to come to pass through the life of our Bishop, James H. Everett. Listen as you have to receive this presentation. Today is Sunday, December 13, 2020. A special day in a very unusual year of happenings, COVID-19. Nevertheless, I consider this an incredibly special day. Today is the birthday of our founder, leader, and my husband, the late Bishop James H. Everett II. When we gather, we gather on Sundays or any day of worship for the purpose of hearing a word with spiritual insight from a vessel of God that educates, encourages, motivates and draws us closer in our walk and relationship with God. Well, with that in mind, I would like to take this Sunday morning to do just that. 
James 1, 22 to 27 says, But be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. For if any be a hearer of the word, and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. For he beholdeth himself, and goeth his way, and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty, and continueth therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. If any man among you seem to be religious, and bridleth not his tongue, but deceiveth his own heart, this man's religion is vain. Pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is this. To visit the fatherless and widows in their afflictions and to keep himself unspotted from the world. Today I will use for our scriptural example, James H. Everett Jr. of Brooklyn, New York, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ. James H. Everett Jr. was born to Martha Doretha and James H. Everett Sr., the late. He met the Lord at a young age and was brought up in the way of holiness. James was challenged by the lifestyles and lack of examples around him and had decided that when he was old enough to be on his own, that it would be the end of his church connection but God had another plan. James continued obediently and submissively to serve and work in the church while living in the household of his elders. In 1963, he transitioned and moved his church membership to the Ministry of the Deliverance Evangelistic Center under the late apostle Arturo Skinner. There, he served faithfully on several auxiliaries, nurses board, youth department, choir, evangelistic street witnessing team, and eventually became a licensed evangelist. In the interim of serving under Apostle Skinner, he was called to serve in the United States Army. Rather baffled and disappointed, he left to serve his term in Vietnam an assignment that he did not welcome. However, he came to realize this also was a part of God's plan. For in those days, he would learn to trust God and develop a relationship with him because his friends were few. His time of freedom was few. He was restricted, but he was in a place where he could read God's word and learn to fellowship with God. And he built a relationship that was personal. He safely returned from Vietnam, but now he had a change of heart to serve God and do kingdom work. What happens when you're in the wilderness? He returned to serving in the ministry, the choir, youth, invaders for Christ, Whatever his hands found to do, he did it to the glory of God. He finally left his secular job to work in the church offices and then became crusade manager for Apostle Skinner. He would travel across and out of country preparing and setting up for crusades for Reverend Skinner. All a part of God's plan. We have many tributes that will be shared during the course of this presentation. I thank God for our elder Elaine Jacobs, who became a sister, friend, and co-worker in ministry. Listen as she shares her tribute. Greetings. Thank you, my sister and pastor, Vanessa Everett for this honor to pay tribute to my brother, your husband, and pastor. I'm speaking this tribute directly to my brother, Jimmy, Bishop James H. Everett, Jr., because I was not able to 
to attend any of your homegoing services. Here are some of the things I would have said to you and testified about. You and I, my brother, go back many years. From the moment I met you by way of your mother and my godmother and mentor, Martha Doretha Everett, you have been an inspiration and encourager to me. I love and honor you for so many things. An important one was how you trusted and how you were obedient to God. It was you who early on spoke lovingly but honestly to me about wielding the word of God like a sword. It was you who took time to get to know me and saw God's intimate hand on my life. It was you who explained to me and discussed with me my gifts of knowledge and prophecy and their workings together. It was you who honored me with your trust and allowed me to be me as I taught and spoke at my home church, Jesus is Coming Church. Your love for God's people and your love and mastery of God's word was priceless. Your deep burden and commitment to reaching the lost for Christ was life-changing for those who met you. You gave me wonderful examples of love, honesty, faithfulness, hospitality, compassion, loyalty, integrity, humility, mercy, and your joyful sense of humor. I honor you, God's man, and will see you again. Jimmy Everett, as he was known then, loved witnessing to souls and sharing the love of God. This would be the theme of his ministry after the passing of Apostle Skinner. How does this all tie into a tribute? Well, let me continue. The transition from one position, working in a great ministry, to a lower estate, being unemployed and not knowing where his next meal was coming from, caused him only to trust God more. And as he traveled through his community and as he would go from place to place, seeing the spiritual condition of those he would pass, he accepted the call of God and began the Deliverance Jesus is Coming Association. And the ministry took off as one of the pioneer black churches in Irvington. Yes, the arms of flesh would fail with promises of many who said they would be there, would support the ministry, would be members. But for one reason or another, there were changes that took place. However, he had already learned to trust and depend on God. He stepped out to do ministry and started at 33 Augusta Street in Irvington, New Jersey, which was the Salvation Army building at that time. God would fill the house with souls and new ministries would begin to bloom just being in that little place that we were in. And outreach was birthed. He could conduct crusades and revivals in venues that larger organizations with resources that were more never dared to do. And God would send in the souls. There was never an age limit on those to be reached. Day camp in the church parking lot, which eventually developed into Christian day school. And we began to burst at the seams. So we moved into 43 Harrison Place. Day camp in the parking lot, kids coming together and hearing the scripture, having a good time fellowshipping one with another, taking day trips, church going on in a house 
that was a Christian reading room. Church going on so much that people would come and sit on the porch and sit in the stairway and sit in the back room peeping through to hear the word of God being preached. Revival services, a tent meeting, putting up a tent in the backyard because the building was just too small to hold the crowds that would come. So we had service as long as we could in a tent in the yard. When you look back on it today, you said, how did we do it? But I can say, God had a plan. We're grateful for the young folks that have come into his life. And we have special words of tribute from Minister Marvin Bennett, words of tribute from Shamar Givens, words of tribute from a young lady that we called our Jersey girl, who became a spiritual granddaughter, Anissa Martin from Cleveland, Ohio. Hi, my name is Anissa. I am from Cleveland, Ohio. Um, the church I go to is Kia David Ministries. My dad is Pastor Marcus S. Martin. And I just wanted to make a message about Bishop Everett. Bishop Everett, he was the greatest person ever. Like he is like, he's still the greatest person ever. Um, like my level of relationship with him is like he was kind of like a grandfather to me because he was like a dad to my dad and everything and i just was like really close to him and everything he would always tell me about advice on school and everything and he always told me that i was going to be a really good teacher one day and at this given moment i am a taller teacher at my preschool and Every day I always think about his words and what he has said to me and that he said like one day I'll own my own daycare and everything and it's going to be so great and everybody's going to want to go to it and I always think about that and it always just sticks to me because his words carry on to every day every day as i'm living and everything and so he has just been so great in my life and you know he he is just a really awesome man and i just love him so much i still love him um i still have his blue pen that we were given at his home going and i always carry it around with me because um, we just been so close and he's known me for my entire life and everything. So, um, yeah, I just love Bishop Everett and I know that he loved me very deeply. Um, he always pushed me to move forward. He always motivated me into becoming a better person, a leader, a better teacher. Um, he always complimented me on my outfits and on my hair and um, he just an amazing person and I absolutely love him. I miss him. I think about him every single day as I'm going to work, as I'm going to sleep, as I'm going to school and everything. I always think about him and I always look back at his text messages that he has sent me in the past and everything. You know, it's just, man, it, it's just hard to believe that he's not here with us anymore. But I always think of all the memories that we have had together and just thought of all the great times we have laughed and cried and everything. But the one thing I will never forget that Bishop Everett has said to me is that he says I'm his world's greatest teacher. And, um, you know, he's just a really, really awesome man. And I love him and I miss him and I miss all of you and everything and I miss New Jersey I miss going to Deliverance Jesus Coming Church um Jersey is like my second home honestly I just love going to New Jersey um Pastor V always talks about me being Jersey girl because I love New Jersey and everything so it's pretty much fun but that's what I want to say about Bishop Everett thank you
Wow. It's a, it's a beautiful Monday, um, and honestly, I would be doing myself a disservice if I didn't get on this on this video and, and talk about my amazing uncle, you know, James H. Everett Jr. Um, love and miss him so much. He was the f person that really instilled, you know, belief and, and faith, and is having unwavering belief, un and empowering belief, and not really limiting limiting yourself, right? Um, always challenging your limits, not limiting your challenges, right? So I always want to forever thank you. I could just remember when I was Jay High, you know, running around with Jay, and you know, we, we never caused any trouble, but we was very, very active. But you always steered us in the right path, the right direction. Um, you was just always the the mesh of the family. Um, always led from the front, and just show everyone, you know, this, you were just a forecast to show everyone else that it was very, very possible to go ahead and be able to do what you want. So I forever thank you. I love you so much, and I miss you, miss you, miss you, miss you so much. I'll see you soon. God bless each and every one of you. I greet you in love and in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I want to start by thanking Pastor Vanessa Everett for this opportunity and privilege to pay tribute to the late Bishop James H. Everett. I also want to thank you for assigning me the hardest task that I've ever had in my entire life, which is to speak about Bishop Everett in less than three minutes. When I think in terms of my relationship with Bishop Everett, it's kind of hard to describe in one word or one thought. But what I do want to do is I do want to thank him for two things in particular. One, being consistent. And two, being a great example of how a Christian should live their life. One thing that Bishop stressed in the pulpit, he stressed one-on-one individually is the importance of having a personal relationship with God. That is, a, that is one lesson, if I had to pick above all others that he taught me, that's invaluable. It doesn't matter what mama think, it doesn't matter what daddy think, it doesn't matter what whoever thinks. You have to know God, you have to know Christ for yourself. Nobody else can do that for you. When you stand on when you stand before God on judgment day, you have to give an account for who? You. Therefore, you need to have a personal relationship with God. And I don't know that he ever knew how much his life and the example that he set before me meant to me. I want to thank him. And the word the reason I use the word consistency is because I can remember times in my life where I made up in my mind I was not doing nothing at all with ministry. And I would still see him and I would still talk to Bishop. But his position and his posture toward me never changed. His love was unwavering. He had no problem with letting me know, son, I'm grieved because I want to see you do what the Lord called you to do. But the love was still there nonetheless. I cherish it. I thank you for it. I thank you for being an example. I thank you for being the leader that you were. I thank you that everybody, every member that ever stood up under you, we have no excuse because we've seen firsthand that living a holy lifestyle, it is doable and it can be done because you did it. I thank you for that. I thank you for who you are. I thank you for all the conversations. I thank you for always keeping it real with me, never sugarcoating it. I just thank you for you. And I thank God for allowing me to be born in a space and time where I could actually have a personal relationship with you. And that in itself led me to wanting a relationship with Christ. So I thank you. I can't, words can never express what it is that you mean to me or how valuable you are in my life. So I'm going to end there before I get too emotional. But I thank you. I thank you. I love you. I will never forget you. I will never let your memory die. 
Thank you, Bishop James H. Everett. And in closing, just for you, I'm so glad that the Lord saved me. I'm so glad that the Lord saved me. If it had not been for Jesus, where would I be? I'm so glad that the Lord saved me. I'll see you again soon, Bishop. God bless.
things grew so much again, we were bursting at the seams. So we had to make yet another move. And he brought life to a dead situation. We purchased 801 Springfield Avenue in a place that was a funeral home. There, the ministry would grow and Maranatha Christian Academy would be extended and begin to grow, even though we had to conduct classes in another town, in another building. Young people were continuing to hear the word of the Lord while under the staff of those that were saved and godly. As I heard one say in the past few days, they felt safe in their environment. They felt content and happy to be able to enjoy the fellowship of their student body. All these things took place because a man went to the wilderness and developed a relationship with God. 801 Springfield Avenue would be the hub for numerous men and women of God to pass through and launch ministries while receiving words of wisdom and encouragement as well as godly instruction. Pastor Everett, as he was known during those days, was not selfish. Whatever visions and ideas the Lord gave him, he shared it with others freely for the sake of expanding God's kingdom, not his own. More and more, he understood this to be God's plan for God's people and God's glory. Bishop never had a mega church, but he had a mega love for people, a mega heart, a mega faith, and he lived a mega life for God. He encouraged the saints to believe and trust God for miracles, and that we did, and that God did brought miracles. He gave us many testimonies of healing and deliverance through our trusting him, and God broke through all of the barriers that the enemy would set up, which in turn brought many souls into the kingdom. We're also grateful for Pastor Edgar Aaron of Chicago, Illinois, who became a spiritual son and brother to Bishop Everett. Hear ye him. Grace and peace be unto you from God our Father and his Lord Jesus Christ. This is Pastor Edgar Aaron from Everybody's Bible Church, you all. The place where you will meet God right here in Chicago, Illinois. Holy greetings to Pastor Vanessa Everett and all the saints of God there at Deliver Jesus Coming in Irvington, New Jersey. Uh, I want to say that uh, my heart will always have a spot empty for the late Bishop James Everett. We thank God for his life, what he meant to me, what he means to you will always be acknowledged and loved. He was a lovable, sweet, giving, humble person and defender of the Lord Jesus Christ. There are countless conversations and countless advice. I don't know where to start, where to start, of what he meant to me personally. There is no way to uh, compare, but uh, I had a natural father. I had uh, two spiritual fathers, the late Bishop, the late Apostle Arthur Hinton and also of Bishop James Everett. And I kind of compare, believe it or not, I kind of compare James Everett to my natural father because of the height. My father was also uh, almost seven feet tall, the same height as uh, Bishop Everett, and always, you know, a tall man, and always had to duck his head and different things. I think that's one thing that drew me to him was the fact that he was tall like my daddy and different things that sort, and he was such a sweet, humble man. I recall many conversations that sometimes a pastor, we were sitting at the table, he would be talking. The pastor Ness would do one of these numbers, let me turn up the volume. He was so soft-spoken, such a gentleman, such a giving man. And uh, I don't know what to say because uh, I loved him. I loved him, and I still love him to this day. And I thank God that God gave him such a grand exit from this world to, to say I'm done, and now I'm laying down my cross and picking up my crown. Uh, I thank God for him, and uh, I want to say that we honor his life by uh, following his teachings. The best way to honor anyone's uh, life, it, the best way to honor anyone's life is to honor their teachings, you know? So I thank God for him. I keep saying it because I do it. I mean it from my heart. I love all of you. Happy birthday, Bishop. 
Hey man, I love you, appreciate you in the beginning. And that's to be, you keep going. I am so godly proud of the work that you're doing. Love you, hope to see you soon face to face. God says the same. Be blessed. We thank God for words from our Bishop Caesar Cabinets. Hear ye him. Bless you, Overseas Vanessa Everett, and to the Third Vince Jesus is Coming Church. Thank you for this moment. I bring greetings from the Praise Tabernacle Church in Jamaica, Queens. Thank God, thank God, thank God that you are taking out this moment to remember not only my bishop and overseer, but my brother. I thank you that you've taken out this time over the years, his ministry. We know and certainly his labor is not in vain. We thank God as he has many times have said to us, as he, as he uh, used the words from the Apostle Paul, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. And Bishop had, had such an impact in my life as I watched him, as I seen him model in his love for souls. It was upon uh, his, his ways of ministry, of sharing ministry, doing ministry, and, and helping others. He's always had a heart to help other people. And when it came time for us to make a decision in our local church of that person who would oversee uh, uh, Praise Tabernacle, uh, if something happened to me or I transitioned and went on with the Lord, that uh, Bishop Everett would be the person who would see the church through its transition. It was, it was an easy decision for us to make because of his life and because of how much he impacted not only me, but also the members of Praise Tabernacle Church. Um, to Lady Everett and to those of you at Deliverance Jesus Coming, you know he, he, he had a way of, of making us all feel special. He had a way of, of uh, also correcting us. He, he, he was like the unpaid comedian. He was funny, but when he said something, it was truthful. And, and so uh, he was like a Zorro. He had a way of cutting you, and you didn't know you were cut until until later on. But uh, my, my, my brother, my overseer, my bishop, he is certainly missed. I miss him dearly, and I miss him daily. I'm just so grateful to, again, know now through the years his love for me and my love for him, knowing that I had a brother to talk to, I had, I had a mentor to watch, and certainly a, a masterful rabbi to follow. He was certainly my rabbi, the master teacher, the master soul winner. What can I say about Bishop James Everett Jr.? I do miss him. I miss him so much. And this is why it's a little emotional for me today to even share these few moments uh, with you today. But the deliverance Jesus is coming. And certainly to Lady Overseer Everett, thank you for sharing him with me and the members of Praise Tabernacle Church in Jamaica, Queens. I am just so grateful. And lastly, maybe it's uh, maybe I'm going a little over my time, but uh, I'm just so grateful that as he recommended me to the board, board of bishops and to the college of bishops because of um, some brothers that wanted me to be their covering, who wanted me to be their bishop, I dared not say yes until I spoke with Bishop Everett and his words were, well, you're already doing the work. Bishop Everett was an encourager. Bishop Everett not only encouraged me, but he encouraged the members of our fellowship and they trusted him. And this is one of the reasons why I'm glad that, um, today that you've given me just, just one moment to say to you again, deliver Jesus coming. Thank you for sharing your leader, my brother with us today. God bless you and I love you guys. Bishop encouraged us to believe God for miracles. We did and God did just what he promised. He gave us miracles over and over again. This young man, who we call our grandson, was diagnosed by the doctors and not expected to live, but because of prayer and God's plan for his life, we can testify that Justin is still with us still working, still doing, and loving God in addition to everything else because of prayer and because of a man of God who said, we are going to believe God for a miracle. We love and thank God for what he's done in Justin's life. There was no hesitation to taking the gospel to the world. 
even if he had to pay his own way. God would provide. His travels took him north, south, east, west, and in the U.S., many places that others dared not to go. He took him to the Caribbean, to Germany, England, Poland, Trinidad, Haiti, and many more. Numbers never mattered, great or small, his mission was to reach souls, even at personal sacrifices. Multiple conventions at Symphony Hall were some of the ministry's greatest feats. Yes, God had a plan, and the mission was being accomplished. The Word of God was always His guide and instructions. Feed the hungry? Okay. Care for seniors and share the Word? All right. Connect with children in their tender hearts and so much more. We'll do it. Still, we were bursting at the seams. So God gave him a plan to expand again. And we landed in 815 Springfield Avenue, our present church home, where we are continuing to do ministry. Bishop planned to step away from God, but God had a plan and took him to his wilderness experience so that he, God, could speak to him and no other voice would he hear. Bishop would answer God alone. God has a plan. We are seemingly in wilderness times and we need to hear from God. He has a plan for you. Thank God for Pastor Lloyd Brown, also of Chicago, Illinois. He has words that he'd like to share as to how long he knew Bishop and how the relationship developed a godly brother and friend. God bless you, Pastor Brown. God bless you, Pastor V. And God bless you, Deliverance. Jesus is coming, family. We certainly thank God for you. I want to thank you for this opportunity to give this tribute to a great, great man of God, the Honorable Bishop James H. Everett, Jr. I first met him in the mid-70s when he was an intricate part of Apostle Arturo Skinner's ministry. And then later on, he and the five disciples performed a wonderful concert at our church where my, uh, myself and my wife were members of the Hope Deliverance Center under the pastorate of Evangelist Jackie Jordan. But it was about some 15 years later that we became close. I accepted him as a father and a brother image at the same time. He was a great role model to me as a man of God, as a pastor, as a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ. He always had a good word for the people of the Lord. And I always, I will always thank God that God blessed us to have this great relationship with the servant of the Lord. And then he accepted my wife as a daughter, and she loved him as a father. So we will never, ever forget James H. Everett, Jr. He will always be in our heart. Oh, we miss him so much. So therefore, let me conclude by saying, family, stick together because this is what Bishop Everett would want. We love you, and we thank God for you. Peace. Sometimes we feel we can step away. Sometimes we think our meeting is just a one-time event. But Dr. Dorothy Brown will share with you the experience that took place after having met pastor at that time, Jimmy Everett. Greetings to my deliverance. Jesus is coming 
church family and friends. My name is Dr. Dorothy Brown and I bring you greetings from Thomasville, Georgia. Uh, I want to give a special uh, shout out to to a awesome woman of God. Uh, her price is far above rubies in the person of none other than overseer Vanessa Everett. God bless you, woman of God. May God richly bless you. Um, I would like to take this time to just tell you a little bit about my uh, relationship with Bishop Everett. Um, it was around 1981. I was invited to attend service at uh, Deliverance Jesus is Coming when it was on Harrison Place. And I had attended a few services and was richly blessed. And I um, mean, the word of God was just, it was just awesome. And um, I remember one Sunday, uh, Bishop prayed for everyone in the building. I mean, it was just, the power of God was just moving in an awesome way. And when Bishop got to me, he began to prophesy. And it was as if, the Lord just unfolded my life before him, not knowing that I would ever see Bishop again, um, because at that time I was preparing to go uh, to Georgia to where my family had relocated. And so um, I left the state of Jersey and went to Georgia. Uh, when I got there, my mom had been pastoring under uh, Church of God. She had the first woman pastor in uh, Boston area. And so she was a pioneer in her own right. Um, but nevertheless, um, after 13 years, uh, the church closed and uh, I was... Um, surprisingly called by God to pastor and at, but this was after a period of time and so um, during that time when I was I began to pastor uh, mother Nettie Duncan who had come to the south to visit some of her people um, that lived uh, in, in Bainbridge Georgia which was like an hour away uh, she came to visit us. Um, she and my mom were very good friends. Uh, they met in Jersey, but they were very good friends. And so she was no stranger to us. And uh, when she got there, she saw, you know, that we needed Bibles. And, and she said, I'm going to talk to my, my pastor. And I'm going to ask my pastor about sending you all some Bibles. And you talk about divine providence. I tell you, I had no idea who her pastor was at the time. But later, when Bishop Everett got in contact with me, I knew who he was, and he remembered me uh, from when I was there, and God used him to prophesy over my life. And so that was the beginning of our journey. In 1988, uh, I was ordained under Bishop Everett as a pastor there in Boston, Georgia, and we've been going on ever since. Bishop Everett was a great, outstanding mentor to me. Um, I tell you, there were times when um, he would come and give us advice. He would um, uh, show us how to handle certain situations um, and uh, he would suggest books to read and things of that sort and uh, he was just a tremendous blessing we look forward to him coming to visit us every year uh, sometimes he would come twice a year uh, to do revivals and it was a great blessing because it helped to strengthen our church uh, and there were um, a lot of men as well as women that attended the ministry and so when Bishop would come and um, people saw that I had a strong covering um, they, they uh, highly respected the ministry as well as myself and I do thank God for that um, I believe that that was something that God did. Uh, also, he was a my spiritual dad. I can remember how uh, many times he would encourage me to just keep on keeping on. I had um, 
experienced so many different things um, through the ministry as well as in my personal life, but he would always encourage me to hold on and to keep moving forward. I can remember a time or two when I would say to Bishop, you know, uh, what about me coming back to Jersey and just helping out? And um, and I remember he would always remind me of Jonah. And so uh, here it is, uh, 32 years later, I'm still pastoring the same church and some of the members that started with me are still with me today and to God be all the glory. Um, Bishop Everett's legacy um, that he um, started here in this area and by just encouraging his daughter to, to stay on the wall will always be remembered and uh, we will always remember you Pastor Vanessa, Overseer Vanessa we'll always remember you and um, we love you and you are in our prayers God bless there are so many on here that were touched and affected there are more to come Listen to all of the tributes that are being shared. What a privilege and an honor to serve under one of the greatest leaders, the late Bishop James A. Jebert Jr. II. What a pleasant, humble, caring spirit he demonstrated. I was honored to serve in the capacity of Pastor Zay president and thankful for what I learned by the example he set. I can think of a few P's from a previous service our overseer spoke about. Patience, personable, pleasant, playful, and a peaceful spirit. I'm grateful for his teaching and for my observance to the example of Christ he set. Our bishop stayed well connected with God. He demonstrated this in spite of his going through. So remember that, remember his example today. As Overseer mentioned during his last days, in his discussion with the father about his flight arrangements to depart this life, he truly set the example about going to the father. I'll never forget his example his legacy, the late Bishop James A. Jebert II. Thank you and God bless you. Giving honor to God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, and to Overseer Vanessa Everett, Senior Pastor of Deliverance Jesus is Coming Church in Irvington, New Jersey. I, Patricia Lofton, count it an honor and a privilege to share with you the impact the late Bishop James H. Everett II had in my life and such an honor and a blessing to be one of his many spiritual daughters. When I first met, met the late Bishop Everett, I was dealing with so many battles and issues in my life, and he would always ask me, is it well? And he became a friend. The love and compassion and encouragement he showed me and his teaching of God's word, he became my pastor. The time and support that he gave me he became my dad. The more he instructed me to get into the word of God and to have a personal relationship with God, he became my spiritual father. His anointed teaching of the true credentials of a godly leader, he was my bishop. Praise the Lord. I want to give a video tribute to my dad, Bishop James H. Everett Jr. I'm so glad that I had the opportunity to meet him by way of my uncle, Uncle Marlo Christian. I remember that he showed me a picture of Bishop Everett and told me this gentleman was the real deal. And nephew, you have to meet him. Upon meeting him, some didn't know that it would have a lasting impression like it has been. It's been a wonderful experience knowing Bishop Everett. At first he was
leadership to me, but he became a father to me. He became a pastor to me. He became a friend to me. He would often tell me and encourage me with words of wisdom and words of knowledge. But he would say this one thing that stuck with me. He said, some of your best sermons are preached by the way that you live. And if you get opportunity, have a few words to go with it. Wow. What a blessing. What an indelible impression he has left upon our lives. He's left a legacy in my heart. While my uncle was carrying Bishop Everett in his wallet, I get the opportunity to carry him in my heart. I'm so glad that I had the opportunity to meet him. It has changed my life and it's revolutionized my direction. I'm so glad that God counted me worthy to meet such a wonderful man with a kind spirit, with a sweet spirit, with a teachable spirit, with an understanding spirit. The scripture that comes to mind that God will give us shepherds after his own heart. I believe that God actually gave us a great shepherd, not just a good shepherd. So glad to celebrate the life of Pastor, Bishop, Dr. James H. Everett Jr. You will always live in our hearts and in our minds and in our spirits. Thank you for the memories. Thank you so much, Pastor Martin, for sharing that awesome, awesome testimony. What we've come to realize is that God's plan for the life of Bishop James H. Everett was to point us to Jesus. We've mentioned his name over and over again, James H. Everett, Pastor James Everett, Jimmy Everett, Bishop Everett, it's only in tribute to him today for what he has done in pointing us to Jesus, helping us develop our relationships with the Lord. Listen, let me not forget my personal touch on this. I am so grateful to have been included in the plan. He brought smiles to my face and loved me to life. And on today, December 13th, this tribute is to a great man of God, Bishop James H. Everett II, who loved his family far and near, his church, the brethren, and me, Vanessa Everett. But in our opinion, I think we can all agree that he loved God the most and that he pleased God and completed answering the call and following the instructions to be a doer of the word. Listen, many of you today are facing questions and challenges in this time, but God's commission has not changed. He is still saying, go into all the world. He doesn't tell us what vehicle to use. He just says, go, preach the gospel. Do the work, do the work. To you who have continually heard the word, but you have not decided, God's word lovingly says, greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for a friend. Bishop James H. Everett was not Jesus. However, he followed his example in personal sacrifices to do the work of the Lord. What kind of love for God is that? There is no sacrifice that we make that the Lord does not see 
and give reward. So as I bring this time of sharing to a close, I'd like to just share with you. Bishop James H. Everett II is now resting from his labor to his reward. This is my tribute. God bless you all. I pray that even through the tears that we may have all shed together today, that we can acknowledge how blessed we as a body of believers have been to have Bishop in our lives. Yes, this was an unusual service this morning. This is not one of those preaching, holding my ear, jumping around, even jumping in my seat as you usually See me do some time, but from the word of God, the greatest thing that we could see is an example that is from our day and time who has lived the life and has been a, been a blessing to so many. I pray that you have been able to pick up the message that's in here, not just talking about the man, but a talking about the experience of him who would at his early age in his youth make a decision to walk away from God and God changed things around. So many of us have experienced things in our lives and especially during this time of COVID where we've all been discombobbled, all messed up over the fact that we don't know which way to go. We don't know what to do, but God has a plan. And I pray this morning that each of you have heard the word of God to be doers of the word, just not hearing it. We've been hearing it for years and years over and over again. We've heard messages where we've even heard this, pre this, mess this scripture preached to us over and over again. But we, we heard it, but our response was not to do it. I implore you, I encourage you, I alert you, putting up that alert today. I, I have a system in my house that, that uh, uh, alerts me when something is going on. And even right now, that system will tell me on a daily basis whether it was, it, whether it was on for security or whether the battery is low, the power is low, and in what area of my house I need to give an address or attention. This sharing today in the form of a tribute is an alert to say, don't give up. We're in wildernesses right now. While we're here, let God speak to you. Let God encourage you. And you do God a service by responding to what he says to you, by renewing your fellowship and relationship with him. And to those of you who are sinners, or those of you who don't know Jesus Christ on a personal basis, this day is for you also. You may feel totally awkward in how do I get to him? What do I, it's easy. It's a simple acknowledgement that you need him. Any man be in Christ, he becomes a new creature, the Bible tells us. So how do you get to become a new creature in Christ? All we have to do is believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, first of all. Believe what his word says. That's what Bishop had to do. He had to come to a point where he wasn't looking at the examples around him that weren't living it. Those that were supposed to be, especially because he knew what the Bible said we should be. And he had to get to a wilderness place and decide, Lord, me and you. So that's what you say. God, it's me and you right now. I need help. I need Jesus in my life. I'm asking you to come in, wash me in your blood, forgive me of my sins. Help me and make me a new creature in you. Give me an understanding as I read your word. Open it and make it clear to me. 
and I will live for you the balance of my days. Father, we thank you right now for what we've been able to deliver today through the life and through the tribute that we've paid to our bishop. I pray right now that the example that he was to all of us, the encouragement that you will do that in the lives of these who submitted their lives to you today. God, I pray for those who are still experiencing the hurt, the emptiness, the loss of our bishop being gone. But we did not worship Bishop. We worship you. We thank you for the vessel. And now the vessel has been emptied and put to rest. But God, we thank you because he's now resting as the word of God from labor and he's receiving his reward. Oh, he talked about this reward often. He would tell us how he was going to dance around heaven. We don't know if his dancing is taking place yet. But this we do know, and we believe so much, that he pleased you. His life was clean before you, and we thank you. Now, God, that was a blessing of a gift that you gave us. And here we are at Christmas time. Help us to acknowledge the greatest gift giver, you. Help us not to be caught up in the fashion of the season and forget that you've blessed us. Help us to move on. Help us to acknowledge Jesus Christ and his sacrifice. Yes, I say it again. He came as a baby, but his life and the years that he gave was because you gave and had a plan. And you had a plan of salvation for us. So we thank you. These things we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you all. We thank you for staying with us and listening through this whole presentation. Again, I pray that it was a blessing to you. I pray that it was an encouragement to go on. And now as a part of our regular worship, we take this time to prepare to give our giving, our offerings to the Lord. And so you know that here at Deliverance Jesus is coming. We have several ways that you can worship in your giving. Those ways are first, you can visit PayPal, uh, by clicking on djicc.org and click give, and it will connect you to PayPal in order to send your offerings, pay your tithes, give something special to the ministry so that we can continue on. You can also go to djicc815 and use Cash App and give an offering. We thank each of you so far. I'm stopping right here in the middle. We got two more, but I'm stopping to say thank you to those of you who continue to support the ministry. It's so important that I let you know, we appreciate you. We thank you. You've helped us to survive, to be able to complete some necessary repairs and things on our properties and to continue to do the work of the Lord. We have those that we wanna reach out in missions to, to bless during this season who've lost their jobs and families are struggling. Thank you for your giving. You'll help us to do that. You can also text to give at 551 258 is up on your screen, 8547. Or you can use mail and mail your offerings to Deliverance Jesus is Coming Church, P.O. Box 111564, Irvington, New Jersey, 07111. Thank you for your presence today. I pray you were blessed. Thank you. Remember what we have coming up in the days ahead. The, the, the community feeding on next Saturday, the 19th, the service on Friday, uh, which is the last outreach service for this season and time. And then uh, New Year's and Christmas and New Year's services. We're looking forward to you joining us and having someone else join with you. Plan a, a what they call it, a Facebook party or whatever, a Zoom party. Get your friends, your relatives to join us. Be blessed. And we thank God for you and for you being with us on today. Father, I pray that you'd bless your people as we part at this time. Be with them, encourage them, keep them, protect them, give them testimony after testimony of victory. And God, the blessing that comes, may it cause others to be drawn to Jesus Christ. These things we ask in Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. I love you. 
God loves you and there's nothing you can do about it. Be well, be safe until next service. God bless you. I'm so glad that the Lord saved me. Put your hands together, everybody. Listen, you've been running and running, running for a long time. Your time is winding up, better make up your mind. It's late in the evening, the sun is going down. Better get right, get right, while it may be found. I want to. Lord side.